Hi, Beck Mac here for Popsart, and I am in the best seat in the house here in QPAC with Artistic Director of Opera Queensland, Patrick Nolan, because we are here for the premiere of Lorelei, which is a new contemporary Australian work that will be in this theatre this week. And uh, we're going to have a little catch up about the work, Patrick. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Beck. Yeah. Very, have very excited about what's about to happen. Now, this is a new contemporary Australian work. How did it come about? So it's come out of uh, Melbourne. It was it was originally commissioned by um, op Victorian Opera, and uh, it's a new work which Ali McGregor had the initial idea of, uh, where she was thinking about the, the the whole notion of a siren, and that um, you know these women who sit atop th these rocks and apparently seduce men to their death, you know, by their song through their beautiful song, uh, and. She took that to two to her two good friends, Dimity Shepherd and Antoinette Halloran, who are also singing in the piece. Uh, and they started to just explore the whole idea of what a siren is and, mm. and I guess start to think about it from the siren's perspective and actually ask questions, well, you know, ha ha have we actually figured them, I I you know, all wrong through, through, through time? And what happens if we actually look at it from their perspective? Maybe, it's, maybe the sailors are just bad sailors. <laughs> 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 Blaming women again for all their problems. E exactly, exactly. So it kind of unfolded from there and then uh, they, they brought in um, Sarah Giles as the director and dramaturg and um, Jul Julian Langdon as the composer uh, and Gillian Cosgrief and Casey Bonetto, who people might know from uh, Keating, um, wrote the book. Yeah, it's a fantastic um, collective of people and predominantly women. And I met um, the cast the other day. Ali is wonderful. And it's so great to hear what they're drawing on um, creatively from their own body of work, having worked at the Spiegel tent. So on the stage, are we going to see something of a little, like, that's a little reframing, re different in the actual presentation of the work? Yeah, it's, so as you say, Ali, you know, th they're all trained opera singers and, and they've all had phenomenal careers in opera, but uh, they have also s stretched out and had it. You know, Ali is a, you know, she ran the Adelaide Cabaret Festival for many years and, and is, a, is a really wonderful cabaret performer as well. And Dimity and Antoinette also have, you know, s sing beyond the opera stage. And I think they were really interested in, in exploring that you know, a crossover and sort of saying, okay, well, you know, this this is who we are as artists and let's bring let's bring that experience and let's bring that energy to the work. And so um, the music sort of, it's, it certainly comes from an operatic place. It's, 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 it's really, you know, very beautifully, very tightly scored work. Um, and it's really interesting. I was just talking to one of the musicians working on it and it sounds like it's very easy and, it, and they sort of draw upon the whole idea of the water and the ocean and, and the, the environment that the sirens are in. Um, and so the premise is that, w that we as the audience are, are on a cruise ship sailing down the Rhine. <laughs> <laughs> Love boat. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but what the, mus what the uh, musician was saying is that it's in fact a really complex story and, and it's very ingeniously sort of uh, arranged so that you think it's easy and it's light, um, but in fact there's an enormous amount going on, uh, like all great music really, I guess. Yeah. I can't wait to see it and that's, uh, I'm getting a little sneaky peek tonight, yeah. here alone in the theatre, <laughs> which is, yeah. you know, very yeah, romantic. <laughs> <laughs> but um, on a, a more serious note, um, uh, it seems like Australia is at this crucial moment in its, uh, I guess, its cultural um, ide identity of itself as a patriarchy that's been very uh, brutal and, you know, the level of, of ab violence and abuse that's happened just in our own federal parliament has been shocking to many people. And particularly w a lot of women I know are very traumatised at the moment. Like, this show has kind of got a really speaks to that on, in, on some levels. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the reasons that we program the work is because it does speak to those, those questions and it, it asks them in a way that is really sensitive and, it's r and in a way that sort of doesn't pull any punches, really. And... And I think that's in, it's in, you know important, particularly in the context of opera, which you know as we know there's been a lot of conversation around you know the inherent misogyny of it as an art form, and so I think it is important that as as an organize as a, as a as an opera company that we're we're exploring these questions. Uh, but 
we weren't to know that when we programmed this work that it would be being presented at a time when, as you say, you know, people, the nation is traumatised. And, and yes, I, I, I can't imagine what it would be like to be a woman, to see these people, to see that, you know, the, the chief lawmaker in the country and the prime minister sort of really not dealing with these these problems and these concerns in a way that seems to be actually addressing or empathising with with the trauma of the situation and the trauma of these women who are going through, you know, what are, are horrific um, experiences. And, um, yeah, I hope that in, in experiencing this show, we do ask questions and create a space for that conversation to happen because it has to happen yeah. um, and, and change has to come. And, and if, you know, this work can somehow participate in that, then that will be a really good thing. I guess that's the power of art. In a way, I guess it's also almost a luxury of working in an art form that has had such a historical um, context to be able to reframe, reconsider and like rework where we are now so we can maybe consider a better future. Do you feel that opera offers this thing that other art forms potentially don't in such a way? That's, that's an interesting way of looking at it. I guess it does. You know, I, I, sp I suppose... I suppose any art form that's been around for, you know, for over 400 years has the capacity to reflect mm -hmm. on what, you know, w where it's come from and hopefully we're always doing that so we're not making the same mistakes. Um, but I, I guess for the, the other thing for me with opera is that, you know, through the music, it actually works in a really emotional mm -hmm. space. So it actually creates this emotional space that in some ways bypasses um, you know, the rational mind and allows us to actually deal with the trauma in a way um, that will potentially maybe be healing, but also, you know, may, will can, can also be disturbing, but in a, in a, I guess in an environment where you, you, you know, you have the support of the audience around you and hopefully, you know, and particularly in the context of this work, it's, it's done in such a way that it, it, it in, you know, it invites argument and it invites reflection but in a way that's witty as, as well as in a way that is tender and vulnerable and actually, you know, creating that space for us to, to go to those difficult places and, and ask those hard questions. Well, I can't wait. It's so exciting to be back in the theatre and back seeing work back on the stage. And I think, uh, again, the power of, the art of art will be uh, felt and reverberating through our culture so we can come to terms with some of these bigger things. But thank you. Thank you.